this episode, we're going to continue our walk through the Rails source code that we left off with in episode 395, specifically the view layer here. What exactly happens when Rails is rendering a template when a request comes in? The first thing I like to do is try to get a context of where our code is being executed in the Rails stack. So in this template, I'm going to just output the current class. And if we load this page, this gives us, it looks like an anonymous class, so that's not very helpful. Well, let's see what the super class of this is. And loading the page, and that is action view base. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So the code inside of our layout file is executed in the context of action view base. Where is that in the Rails source code? If you haven't already, you can grab the Rails source code by running git clone in this repository. And then I'll go into that directory. And then check out the uh, version tag 329 so that it matches a version that we're using in our little example Rails application that we're testing with. And then I'll open up action pack lib, which is where the view and controller related code is. So in here, we can find action view base. And I like to take a look at the different modules which are included in the class. You can see three here, but the helpers module will include a lot of other modules containing all those helper methods that we call in the view that we know and love. Uh, the other modules are erbutil, which has some uh, escaping for like HTML escaping. And we have our context module, which is a little bit interesting. According to the documentation here, this context module could also be used in another class that you want to act as a view context besides action view base. I haven't seen many examples of that in action, but it seems like an intriguing idea. So now that we have some idea of where the view code is located, let's take a look at what exactly happens when a request comes into this index action. How does it render the template? Now in episode 395, I walked you through what happens in the controller layer when a request comes in. If you recall, inside of the abstract controller rendering module, we have this render method, which is where the controller and view layer sort of meet. And this is what renders the template. And then it sets it to the body of the response. Now, before we do any rendering, we're going to generate some options by calling normalize render. And this is defined down here, calls normalize args, which if you pass in, a, say, a symbol or a string, is going to convert it to an action option. And then it calls normalize options, which in most cases will add a template and prefixes option to our render call. Now let me go back to the example Rails application to get a better understanding of what this is doing. Here in the articles controller, I have that index action which is being rendered. And uh, we already saw in episode 395 that if no uh, render call is present, it's going to call render implicitly without passing any arguments in. So what it does when it normalizes the options, it will add a couple of options, template, and that will be the name of the action, in this case index, and also a prefixes option, which will contain the name of the controller and super classes. So in that case, it is articles and application. This will look for an index template under the articles directory or application directory if the articles doesn't exist. Okay, let's dive back into the Rails source code under the controller's render method. After we normalize the options, we call render to body which calls render template, which is defined here. So this uh, first clears the lookup context to render format if a format option is passed in, and then it calls render on a view render, passing in a view context. So there are three different objects we're introducing here, view context, re view render, and lookup context, and they're all related to uh, rendering out the view. So let's look at each one, but first starting with the view context. So what this does is instantiate a new uh, view context class, and that is defined up here, which is actually defined right here. And this calls action view base prepare. So what does that do? Let's take a look at action view base. Uh, this has a prepare class method, which calls class.new. And this is going to create a new anonymous class passing self to it. So it's going to subclass action view base. So this is the anonymous class that we were seeing at the beginning of this episode when we inspected it in the template. And this inherits all the behavior of action view base, but also includes a few modules passed in from the controller. And this is going to give us some custom routing and helper behavior, which is added from within the controller. So each controller can have its own uh, context that has some specific methods in it. Okay, back into the controller. Uh, when this view context class gets instantiated, we pass in a few arguments, including one called view assigns. What is view assigns? Well, this is where we transfer the instance variables from the controller to the view. You see we set 
all the uh, grab all the instance variable names from the controller, uh, assign all their values into a hash. So this hash is going to be passed into action view base when we instantiate it right here into this assigns, and that's going to be uh, passed in through here, which will end up setting the instance variables for each of the uh, values in, in the hash. Now some developers really don't like that Rails is doing this. It kind of goes against the grain of objects, and I agree to some extent, but it's nice to know that the code involved really isn't too complex in transferring the instance variables over to the view. Now that we have some idea of how a view context is set up, let's take a look at the lookup context next. This method is actually defined under the view paths module, and this creates a new lookup context instance, and it passes in the view paths along with a few other details. To get a better understanding of what view paths are, let's take a look at this in the Rails console. We have our articles controller, and if we call view paths on this, we get a, a path set object, which includes the path to the views directory. Now there are ways to extend this and add other view directory paths, and you can check out episode 269 for further details on configuring this. Okay, so we're passing in our view paths when we instantiate our lookup context, but what does a lookup context do? Well, that's defined down here, and there's some documentation here, and as the name implies, it's used to look up templates. And so it makes sense that we're needing to pass our view paths into that, because that is where the templates are located. Now I'm going to come back to this lookup context class a little later when we get into rendering a template. So speaking of rendering, let's go back into our rendering module and take a look at the third piece of the puzzle, which is the action view renderer, and we pass in the lookup context when we instantiate that. And this is the object that we call render on when we call render in the controller. And we pass in our view context and render options into that method call. So let's take a look at this class, which is defined under the action view renderer directory, renderer.rb, and here's that render call. Now the behavior between rendering a partial and a template is quite a bit different. So uh, that split is made early on, so this calls render template if we're rendering our action view. And here's that call, which we call a template renderer.render, which a template renderer is defined down here just a separate class. So we're just delegating our render call into this template renderer class. Now there's quite a bit of code involved in this render call, but don't get too overwhelmed. We're basically fetching a template object and then rendering that template. So let's see how we fetch our template first. This is going to be down here, and the behavior changes a lot depending on what options are passed into our render call. I'm going to focus on this template option because if you recall, that is the option that's automatically added when we normalize the render options from the controller action. So this is going to call find template, and this find template method is delegating to the lookup context. And that makes sense since that is designed to fetch our template. So our lookup context, the find template method is alias to find, which fetches it on view paths. Okay, so now the question is, what does viewpaths.find do? Well, viewpaths, if you recall, is a path set, and we can find that here. And let's look up that find method, which is going to look for all the templates and fetch the first one, otherwise raise this missing template exception, which you've probably seen this exception if you try to ever render a template which doesn't exist. So find all here is going to loop through all the different paths that are available and which is going to return a resolver and we call find all on a resolver. Okay, so more delegation going on here. Our resolver is under the template directory right here. So that find all method will look for a cached template matching those details. And if one isn't available, it's going to call find templates. Now find templates is going to raise this not implemented error unless we're calling it on a subclass, which is what we're doing in our Rails application. This is kind of cool because a resolver can fetch the templates in different ways depending on the class that is you're using. The Crafting Rails application book has a neat example of how to make a custom resolver. So anyway, we have our find templates method, which is defined down here under the path resolver. And this ends up calling query, which is finally the code involved in reading the contents of the template file and creating a new template object. And you can see we pass in the file contents into here and also a handler object, which is what is going to be interpreting the template. Now Rails comes built in with a couple different handlers for ERB and XML Builder, but you can create your own and customize them as I show in episode 379.
All right, now that we have our template object, let me quickly review what it took to get it. Uh, our template renderer delegated to the lookup context, which in turn delegated to the path set, and that delegated to the resolver. Quite a few layers we're going through here, but that allows for some flexibility in which layers you want to swap out if you want to change some of the lookup behavior. Anyway, let's go all the way back up the chain back to our template renderer. So now we know the find template method ends up returning a template object, which by the way, notice that this does a check if it responds to render whatever object is passed into the template option. So this means you could uh, look up the template object in your own custom way and uh, set that to the template option if you don't want to rely on Rails as template lookup. Anyway, once we have a template object, we can render it. So we grab our template and then render the template here. So this is called down here. Now before we attempt to render that template passed in, we first try to render it within a layout. And to fetch a layout, we call find layout, which is defined here. We use resolve layout for that. And then we fetch a layout in a variety of ways, but most of them end up calling find template. So a layout template is fetched in the same way as a normal template. And once we fetch that layout template, we yield to the block passed in here, which will end up rendering the template first and later rendering the layout. And it's going to put the content of the rendered template in the layout wherever we have a yield call without any argument passed in. That's what this block right here will do, but I won't get into the details of that here in this episode. Next, let's find out what the render call on the template object does. If you recall, the template object is instantiated with the template class, which is defined here. And let's take a look at that render method. Now the rendering behavior is kind of split into two parts. Uh, first it compiles the template, which is going to generate a new method on the view context. And then it calls that method on the view. So it does this, I think, for performance reasons. So let's take a look at this compile method and see what that does. And this compile call will end up delegating to another compile call. But first of all, we're going to figure out what module we want to add the uh, method to. We're going to add it to the action view compiled templates, which is a module defined under action view context right here. This is a place that we're going to hold the compiled template code, which is the module we're adding the compiled methods to. So this module is passed into this other compile method, which is defined below. And this calls handler.call, which if you're familiar with template handlers, uh, this call method should return some Ruby code that needs to be compiled into the method. So this returns Ruby code, which is going to be added to the very end of this method definition here. And then it's going to add that method to the module. So here, mod.modeval, that's where it's adding that method and defining it in the compiled uh, methods. Now the name of the compiled method is determined down here, the method name. Uh, this is probably going to look familiar if you've ever seen an exception raised in the view. Uh, the method name is kind of long and it includes the name of the template and so on. Well, that is where this method name is generated. Okay, so let's go back to that render method. And now we can see we're calling view and calling the method that was generated. So that is what's going to render out the template and uh, return the string of content. Now the code defined in that compiled method is determined by the handler. So in the case of an ERB template, that's defined right here. And this is going to use erubis, but I'm not going to get into all the details here, but it's just how it's going to generate the uh, code from the ERB template. So let's go back up the chain now. The uh, string of rendered content is going to be returned in the template render. So that's going to be returned from the render call, which is returned from the action view render, render call. And that is going to be returned from the rendering module. And that is going to be set to the response body. So that's how template rendering works in Rails. Wow, so there's quite a bit going on behind the scenes when a request comes in and a Rails application renders the template. But there's a lot of caching built into Rails, so it keeps it quite speedy. Now one thing I haven't covered in this episode are the helper methods that you can call on a template like link to or render, but most of those are pretty easy to explore on your own. Here's a little challenge though, now that you have a better understanding of action view, uh, try to figure out what is happening in this case right here where we're calling render and passing it a collection of records. I'll give you a hint, start in the rendering helper module, there you can find that render method that we're calling in the template. <laughs> 
Well, that's it for this episode on the Action View walkthrough. I hope it gave you some idea on what's going on behind the scenes when Rails renders a template.